Welcome yeah. to another episode of The Brand Called You, a podcast and podcast show that brings you leadership lessons, knowledge, experience, and wisdom from thousands of successful individuals from around the world. I'm your host, Ashutosh Garg, and today I'm delighted to welcome a very, very multifaceted and successful individual from Mumbai, India, Mr. Siddharth Mohanty. Siddharth, welcome to the show. Thank you so much, Mr. Ashutosh. It's a great moment. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you so much. Uh, Siddharth is a sustainability evangelist and a content creator. He is the co-founder of two startups, which are Twick World and Circle. So Siddharth, before we get into sustainability, you've had an amazing journey in the corporate world. You're an entrepreneur and now you are into sustainability. Tell me about your journey in brief. Yeah, so... Uh... From a corporate uh, career, moving into entrepreneurship was a painful uh, point, uh, which I uh, started in 2011 mm -hmm. uh, with with first failure that I uh, that I that I saw. Mm -hmm. uh, and at 2011, it was it was not like kind of apart from Flipkart. I think uh, there were not so many things happening in the startup world. Correct. Uh, but we started doing it uh, quite early, but that couldn't go beyond one and a half years. So, mm -hmm. uh, I mean, I had to uh, move out, but the venture started running. Mm -hmm. So I was mostly into uh, financial services sales, uh, worked for banks and uh, stockbroking companies. Mm -hmm. uh, my last company was into investor relations and public relations uh, mm -hmm. in Mumbai itself. And in 2014, he actually started taking a serious move into entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. uh, because Joe was not my uh, cup of tea and it was like, you know, reporting to the bosses and uh, a lot of pressure. And I think I was not happy what I was doing. Right. Uh, so from a sales background uh, to here, I have to uh, do sales for myself. I have to mm -hmm. promote myself. I have to do, uh, I have to tell people that what I'm doing. Yeah. So I'm on my own. Yeah. And at the end of the day, I feel happy that, yes, I did uh, something for myself at the end of the day. Uh, but in the earlier life, I said at the end of the day, I see, uh, okay, uh, I did something for the company I worked for and it was not giving me that kind of happiness mm -hmm. uh, satisfaction. So uh, from a job to a, towards an entrepreneurship is a painful journey, but yeah, I had struggled a lot. But again, uh, it was kind of a self-satisfaction that, uh, that I got and mm -hmm. that was very important. And I had this in mind that, yes, I am moving into a, uncharted territory and where it is not sure what you're going to do the the money is not sure you are not it is not uh sure that whether you're going to get, get the money at the end of the month mm. and uh yes but managing somehow uh is is an important uh skill you know mm. so and I learned it from my father-in-law from my wife from so many people that those supported me family and friends uh motivation motivators a lot of people who said yes you can do it yeah just 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 go uh, get, get into the flow you know mm -hmm. uh, don't stop but get into the flow mm. and it will happen someday i don't know when right so here it is a journey and there is no success and failures i have seen already a lot of ups and downs so it is still ongoing and i'm enjoying yeah. it fantastic fantastic and then what made you move uh, and focus so much as a sustainability evangelist it happened in 2019 uh, mm -hmm. when I actually, uh, I mean, I was uh, I was in Germany, living in Germany for one and a half years uh, for a sustainability research, as a sustainability research fellow uh, mm -hmm. under German government fellowship program. And uh, there I actually learned it and I saw how the world is moving into sustainability, what companies are doing mm -hmm. and what people are talking about especially from a European perspective, mm. then I could relate myself that what I did in the last 10 years and then what is happening in the world, where is the connect? Okay. How, how do I connect myself, my own self mm. and in the venture that I am doing and my contribution or impact to the society, mm. how these things are connected? Am I doing something meaningful and keeping profits in mind? Like mm. I have to earn at the same time, I have to create some impact for the uh, society, you know? Mm. People should say that, hey, this guy is doing something and something meaningful for the people or around yourself, where you are staying, where you are living. Right. And I learned the tactics or know-hows or saw what the industry is doing here in, in, in Germany. And I could, like, it, it motivated me uh, uh, moving from a very, very profitable mindset, you mm. know, to a 
that were impact mindset. Mm -hmm. I was always thinking about money. How do mm -hmm. I make money from my venture? How do I get customers? I didn't care about, I don't, I don't care whether they came through bus or train or uh, I don't know whether they emitted a lot of tons of CO2. Okay, mm. I mean, I didn't care about anything else, okay. just money. But but then I realized that there is a different part of the life, like mm. there is a different scenario, which mm. is already happening. Mm. And then uh, we touched upon, like, now we saw COVID happening. We saw the mess around uh, everywhere. Mm. Then I shifted my mindset or thinking to a different, uh, you know, uh, into a different mindset. Mm. So as a person, I wanted to change myself. And I tried to uh, move into a more uh, impactful uh, career, you know, where these two things go hand in hand. Money also impact. So uh -huh. I think this is a great, uh, this is a great uh, time. And I think I moved into a rise at the right time. Mm -hmm. And I, I yeah. feel it's a right step towards uh, doing something. Right. And, you know, for my viewers and listeners, uh, Siddharth, um, help me understand the word sustainability. And how are you linking your own ventures with the SDGs? Yeah. So uh, fundamentally, you know, very basic, if you uh, like, if we understand about the definition of sustainability, it's like, you know, I'll give an example. Mm. My grandmother planted a tree, which is still there in my village. Mm. So I am from Orissa and the tree is, is not less than 70 or 75 years old. And it's a mango tree from Odisha. So in Odisha, you will see a lot of mango trees. Yeah. And uh, the tree is still there. And it is like, you know, you will see some leaves out there. And it is not like kind of, uh, it is it is looking very old and kind of, you know, kind of looking at its mm -hmm. heritage, 70, 75 years. And it is still giving fruits, right? And now my grandmother did that. And now I'm the second, like the second generation. And uh, I feel that uh, my children or their great, great grandchildren, I don't know, they will not see, mm. they may not see this tree mm. if it has to be like this for the next 15 or 30 years. Okay. Mm. I hope this will be there for the next 30 years. So I'm getting fruits from the same tree. Mm. My children, I'm sure they are going to see the, the same tree is there after 15 years mm. and uh, their great grandchildren. Right. So, uh, look at the generation, everybody is enjoying the fruits from the same tree. If I cut it down right now, then it's over, right? It's over. Uh, nobody's going to see this. Mm -hmm. Now, this particular act is, is, is something which is uh, a kind of a, a sustainable uh, act, right? We as a family, as a society, we care for this tree to be there uh, so that everybody is getting fruits out of it. And I'm saying uh, it is it is it is an act or it is a it is a it is a lifestyle. Sustainability is a is an act by itself, and uh, it is how we live our life without spoiling or damaging the the ability of the future generations to get benefit from. So I am taking benefit. My great grandmother, uh, sorry, uh, yeah, my great grandmother did it, and my great grandchildren will do it. Mm. This is how the whole. Uh, the whole uh, process is all about. So this what is a, a basic basic uh, definition. What a great story and what a great example. Thank you. So, you know, based on all the work that you are doing in India, how seriously is the corporate world taking sustainability or is it a lot of lip service? I mean, this is the only term right now you will see everywhere. Yeah. Uh, I mean, globally, people are talking about it. Of course, India uh, is also like, you know, is is, uh, uh, is moving forward. And uh, it's an important country in the global stage. Okay. Uh, everybody is talking about uh, moving into a sustainable life. But what happens is when you cannot suddenly move into a complete, uh, you know, what do you call pure life or maybe mm -hmm. something which is very, very slow. Uh, okay. Uh, or maybe, so we were moving or we are in the, uh, for last so many years, we have been moving very fast, mm -hmm. like, you know, very fast. We thought about money making, we thought about capital and churning it around and uh, creating more capital capitalistic mindset ideas mm -hmm. that is that is in that is there in the blood we mm -hmm. are like that the human body is like that and this is this has been for so many years mm -hmm. now suddenly the world changed and now suddenly 
countries are talking about hey you know don't move so fast because you will you will see a lot of uh, problems in the society mm. okay think about uh, around you mm. your society and just don't be uh, uh, concerned about only money mm. now as a country you should be always looking for more exports um, um more less imports okay uh, so uh, uh, less trade deficit mm. all these are okay right from a economic perspective but as a country you also have to look at what is the long term uh, what is the long term goal the example which i give this this applies in a broader perspective as well mm. when you look at like now as a city or as a community we are talking about uh, you know carbon neutral and as a country as a economy we are talking about net zero right mm. but people don't understand it so in india specifically we citizens we are not concerned uh, and we do not understand what is it mm. how do we take this to our lifestyle but lot of companies uh, are have started taking this into their uh, products and services mm -hmm. for example ibm did a research recently and they said that 6 out of 10 people in the in the in the world mm -hmm. uh, i mean uh, they are conscious about buying products which are maybe organic or something into eco friendly kind of uh, products and something sustainable like you know mm -hmm. uh, biodegradable or there are different definitions yeah. blah 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 right so mm -hmm. uh and they are concerned especially young people uh, in india mm. uh, or around the world they are conscious about buying something which is really really sustainable mm. and i think uh, india specific to india there are a lot of companies i mean they have come up with social audits right now uh, i mean we had audits earlier but now they are saying that okay we will take this esg uh, whole concept into their balance sheets Correct. and we will see that Uh, whether companies are performing in the right manner or not in the business process, it will mm. take some time. But right now, I think less than one percent or two percent of the whole like of the listed companies in India, I think they have come up with something into some. I mean, doing some, taking some interest. Mm. It's very less now. Mm. I understand, but at least they have they they have they are showing interest. Mm. And we have missions like Swachh Bharat Mission and. Uh, the pradhan mantri dhanyan yojana and there are so many things uh, it shows that the interest from uh, uh, interest from uh, the dynamic leaders of this nation and policy makers they are actually uh, okay. trying to make it happen i know it is not it is not so quick it will take some time Absolutely. but yes we are really we are really proud of our own country and at least they are taking steps very, that is very important very very interesting and my next question to that since you have done so much work in the area of sustainability is that for a lot of our viewers and listeners if I and mean, everyone wants to be conscious about their environment about climate change about so many different things how does one determine what are the areas one should start to work in i mean uh from a sustainability perspective so are you talking about like the from a career perspective no no like, no 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 i mean we just be conscious i mean we, we can all start saving water we can mm -hmm. all be you know conscious about recycling our waste and so many different things okay i think uh, i mean you me any of any one of us can do this but i think it is difficult uh, because uh, if you talk about myself sometimes it is very difficult to be sustainable all the time and uh, practically speaking it is not easy mm. and uh, i mean uh, i mean it is very difficult to be on the on the like um, uh, on this particular uh, idea all yeah. the time mm. because you have to be really conscious and we are not because i am also human being we are not conscious all the time because sometimes example like uh, i i, I uh i am driving the car and sometimes uh, sometimes the like you know the traffic signal uh, you need to switch off switch it off and maybe you know uh, wait for 5 minutes or 10 minutes we don't do that and we see oh uh, it's and i'm getting hot there's there uh, there is summer outside yeah. why should i you know yeah. uh, the ignition is still on and it's on right and we have millions and millions of cars in the cities in the in the in the cities in the lo uh, different locations mm -hmm. and it is 
uh, we are emitting a lot of CO2. Okay, that's a very small example. Correct. But I think there has to be a very very deep level of consciousness mm. should reach out to each and every person uh, at each and every houses to mm. live this live this life. And it is literally difficult. Mm. I mean, I, I can feel it. It is literally difficult. And we really don't do it uh, in any uh, any particular day. Mm. Uh, but but I, if you look at youngsters, uh, they are getting conscious. But the habits or the lifestyle that we are living is, of course, is not sustainable right yeah. now. Yeah. And also, on the other side, there is a different side of it. Uh, if you look at the other side, you will see that there is there is there is no uh, uh, efficiency or affordability or availability mm. of services or products that that are alternative to our existing things right okay. if we find something very odd, nice mm. with the same taste the mm. same flavor the same quality of life mm. that I'm, I'm getting from an alternative i will definitely ship mm. if i'm not getting you know i would not like to ship and what bill gates said i think in one of the uh, one of the meetings i think uh, i don't remember uh, the, mm -hmm. the conference he said, uh, and there is a lot of uh, things happening uh, for for his statement. And he said, it is very difficult uh, to live a sustainable life, and it is not easy, and it will not happen just like that. Mm. Uh, and it is very difficult to do it right, right away. We cannot, uh, uh, I cannot, you know, uh, forget my lifestyle. I cannot just uh, live like that, mm. uh, and you know, uh, go going to a small house and living. I have my aspirations. I have mm. my uh, I want to live a good life, mm. want to eat nice food, which is tasty. If the sustainability uh, ecosystem gives gives me all that, then there is a then it makes sense, right? If right. I don't get tasty food and uh, somebody is saying that, hey, why don't you eat that uh, crap, uh, that mm. particular thing, which is made up of uh, hemp, mm. you know, hemp. So, uh, and it is not nice. <laughs> So we have the, the whole ecosystem has to work simultaneously to create alternate products and services which are as efficient, also affordable, and which will give me equal. Uh, you know, it has to be comparable. You know, mm. so that I migrate to a sustainable lifestyle. Very well said. Great response. Thank you. So, Siddhartha, let me let's move on to your two startups, sure. Twig World and Circle. Tell me about these two startups. So Tweak World is basically a, a, a purpose-driven content. Uh, is a is a media tech platform that mm -hmm. uh, that uses power of storytelling mm -hmm. uh, and data to inspire and influence consumers mm -hmm. and businesses mm -hmm. to live a sustainable life. I mean, uh, there are three things here. One is living. Mm -hmm. uh, how do you live a sustainable life through a variety of uh, kind of through experts? Uh, the, the, from experts interviews like mm -hmm. when you uh, through videos and podcasts mm -hmm. and from engaging content and it it inspires people to take some action that okay if you see a content that okay you can also eat a hemp based hemp uh, a food made up of hemp and that mm -hmm. is tasty mm -hmm. and you actually tested it and you just uh, go back uh, and just share your story mm -hmm. that hey I tested this particular product it's very nice so why don't you buy this and I also show them, hey, you can also buy this from several other uh, places. Mm -hmm. Why don't you test it? So then the content is also educating people and showing them the way to live a sustainable life. Because mm -hmm. first of all, I educated them that, hey, this is what is good. Why mm -hmm. don't you try and test it? And there are yeah. several places. Mm -hmm. And then they took an action going there and buying certain things. And, mm -hmm. and then ultimately, uh, I'm also moving into a oh, business side of it that I'm mm -hmm. helping companies also uh, you know, uh, multiplying their sales. So I, it's a basically a content-led commerce platform, but with a purpose in mind. Okay. I educate people on con, uh, with the help of content. Mm. And then also I help businesses to uh, enable their efforts of doing more sales and so that there is a profit in mind mm. because I take a kind of a revenue commission from companies mm -hmm. because I am also helping them educating consumers and then taking them to the businesses. Correct. So it's like a content-led commerce uh, platform. And also there's a learning uh, because uh, I also intend to do uh, master classes and roundtables on different 
sustainability challenges for mm-hmm. companies mm-hmm. and i spoke to a, just an example i spoke to a lady uh, she is an entrepreneur and she has a problem with textile recycling right mm-hmm. she wanted to find a long term solution right and then what i did is you know i i, I spoke to some companies which can convert this textile waste to bricks mm-hmm. or maybe a very long term solution that's where uh, my involvement or tweak world comes wherein i connect uh, businesses uh you know uh for towards it, it, into to, towards the sustainable journey sustainability mm-hmm. journey mm-hmm. so uh this way a lot of entrepreneurs i am like you know i am talking to and so that i can solve their challenges uh, maybe some people need some classes or training uh, because they don't understand how to do it yeah. and then there are other people who have already got products and innovation they wanted mm-hmm. to connect to businesses mm-hmm. so it's kind of a b2b uh, marketplace very interesting so and, this is about the qual and the other one which is circle yeah so this company is basically is registered in germany because while i was living there so i made a lot of connections and uh, while moving towards sustainability i uh, god introduced me to like minded people because when you think something good about uh, something it happens that you meet like minded people and i met exciting uh, guys who are uh, very very excited they are social entrepreneurs and they said okay why don't we start this particular company i said okay let's let's start building it mm-hmm. and uh, we are getting good response so it is registered in berlin so it's basically uh, it's an employee wellbeing company uh, mm-hmm. it's at a pre seed stage mm-hmm. we are working on the product side mm-hmm. uh, it basically solves the psychological uh, challenges of employees uh, at the workplace Okay. so it's it's uh, yeah. so the product we're building is a psychologically uh, you know it solves the psychological safety problem mm-hmm. because uh, i'll tell you what the problem is uh, across organizations uh, mm-hmm. you will see that a lot of employees uh, uh, didn't perform because of uh, you know they are not open to something mm-hmm. and uh, when i don't judge you or you don't judge me i can open up i can express my ideas my innovations mm-hmm. uh, and uh, when a lot of ideas come Uh, you see that you get a answer of a particular problem mm. when you are like hey you can't speak you know i may be a leader but um, i i should feel free mm. uh, to speak up mm. and what happens is when you are in groups uh, mm. especially in like kind of teams you will see that uh, and i have seen this uh, on all the co-founders with three mm-hmm. of us there are three people mm-hmm. with three of us have uh, faced similar situations in mm-hmm. our in our career in our mm-hmm. uh, in our jobs mm-hmm. that when you are in groups working in teams people mm-hmm. don't speak up and i think that's the only uh, major problem uh, that leads to innovation um, stress mm-hmm. because when you don't speak up with your friends with your colleagues mm-hmm. and with your bosses because we have fear Mm. that hey uh, what he will think you know if i disclose this if mm. i give him his if give him this idea mm. he will say oh this guy oh my god this guy uh, doesn't know you know kind of uh, and when i hear this that hey he didn't like this then there is something going in the mind hey my god i mean um, i could have been better you know why did i speak out kind mm. of oh my god in the next meeting i will not speak you know so mm. let's be quiet so it works inside your yeah, your your soul there. right mm. and you will see the performance going down because you are not allowed to speak mm. so who will ensure the leaders should ensure so we are building a um, it's a it's a it's a model which is of a community building exercise mm. so a group of four people will uh, be trained Uh, through a, a mentor and coach led uh, programs mm. so we have we have a program which is uh, validated by psychologists and some doctors and some experts so we run this program for 12 weeks uh, in a group of four people because in four people we see that there is a research which says that uh, if a group of four people uh, that's quite uh, efficient mm. to find a, a, a solution for a, mm. a specific problem so mm. it goes for 12 weeks and then we do a lot of exercise programs kind of thing and at the end of 12 weeks uh, we also generate some data out of it that how many people actually spoke as as about and right. kind of very so, interesting very interesting and i've got time for one more question and this for the many people who will listen to our conversations adart based on your amazing experience across so many different areas what would you say are three lessons you want our viewers and listeners to take away from the perspective of sustainability 
So from the perspective of sustainability, uh, I will say one or two things in general, like uh, from a from an entrepreneurial perspective, or mm -hmm. if you're if you're doing something in your life, uh, mm -hmm. what I have observed that you know start early. I mean, uh, see, uh, uh, we didn't have privilege in the in the earlier lives that you yeah. know uh, our parents didn't know what to do. Mm -hmm. We uh, we were self made, like we learned by ourselves from friends from. Families that hey this guy is doing engineering okay so which engineering which institute okay let's do it let's apply mm. this mm. job okay let's do that so yeah. kind of uh, uh, learning you know mm. uh, when you uh, yeah. head it on to their life so mm. but now this generation is very smart they are people are starting companies at eighteen or nineteen mm. right mm. so there are people who are very smart I think they have this particular ecosystem mm. there's a different world now Absolutely. which was not there in nineties. So I think that's a very plus point for all youth who are trying to do something, mm. maybe a job or a business or whatever. So mm. same with sustainability. It starts from home. And if inside home, we are conscious for small, small things. Yeah. Or maybe switching off lights or uh, don't waste tap water or whatever. Uh, you yeah. know, uh, working with your mom in the kitchen and try yeah. to practice small things mm. that, that matters to okay. me. Yeah. In mm. my family, I think then we can make a real impact outside of your house. Mm. So that's, uh, I think that's the major, uh, you know. Yeah, that's, of... a, that's a great point. That's a wonderful point. And so that on that note and your two amazing lessons, which is start early and uh, sustainability start from home. Thank you so much for speaking to me. Thank you for talking to me about your amazing journey and your own realization of moving from just focusing on making money to impact and sustainability. Thank you for talking to me about sustainability and all the work that you are doing uh, and trying to get so many more people to talk about and understand. And thank you also for speaking to me or both your startups, Twick World and Circle. Thank you again and good luck to you. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much for having me. And it's a great uh, moment for all of us uh, around the world. And I'm really, I was really happy to be here. And I know, Thanks. wish you all the best. Thank, Thank you so you. much. Thank you. Thank you for listening to the brand called You Videocast and Podcast, a platform that brings you knowledge, experience, and wisdom of hundreds of successful individuals from around the world. Do visit our website, www.tbcy.in, to watch and listen to the stories of many more individuals. You can also follow us on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Just search for the brand called You.